One thing you'll notice super fast when you start working in a lab is that you generate a ton of garbage doing science. Chemicals, tubes and stuff, organisms. But what do you do with all that garbage? Or to put it more tastefully, waste. We can work with some pretty dangerous materials in the lab. So there are a lot of important rules and regulations for how to dispose of it all properly. In this video, we'll go over some common waste disposal techniques, but your environmental health and safety office and your lab will have more detailed instructions for your particular workspace, so be sure to follow their guidelines and training requirements. Let's start with biological waste. The EHS office here at Harvard defines bio-waste as potentially infectious materials to humans, animals, and plants, genetically modified materials, animal carcasses, and human and animal tissue or pathological waste. Bio-waste can come in lots of different forms, but we generally put them in one of three categories. Liquids, like blood or bacterial cultures. Sharps, like syringes or blades, that have been in contact with pathogens, tissue, or genetically modified materials. And solids, basically anything that's not liquid or sharp. Could be genetically modified plants, microorganisms growing on solid media in petri dishes, test tubes used in bacterial preps, etc. Solids can be disposed of in designated bio-waste containers. These containers are lined with a red bag stamped with the universal symbol for bio-waste. When they're three quarters full, tie them with a single knot, close the bin, and dispose of them according to EHS guidelines. In our case, we leave them outside our lab to be collected by trained personnel. The waste will be sent to a facility to be exposed to radio waves or incinerated to neutralize the biohazard before disposal. Because the solid waste is collected in plastic bags, you cannot put sharps like needles or blades in there. They'll poke right through the plastic, it'll leak bio-waste everywhere, and it can harm the person collecting the bags. Sharps contaminated with bio-waste need to go in special plastic containers that can't be punctured. They're usually red and stamped with the universal symbol for bio-waste. When they're three quarters full, secure the lid and dispose of the sharps bin according to your EHS guidelines. Here, we can put the sealed sharp spin in the larger bio-waste container for solids. Liquid biological waste, like these bacterial cultures, needs to be treated with a chemical disinfectant before washing it down the sink. We add bleach to our liquid bio-waste to reach a final concentration of 10% bleach. So I have a 250 milliliter bacterial culture here, so I need to add around 30 milliliters of bleach to reach 10%. The bio-waste has to sit with the disinfectant for at least 20 minutes before rinsing it down the drain with plenty of water. You can also autoclave liquid bio-waste prior to drain disposal, but do not add chemical disinfectant if you plan to autoclave. Bleach plus autoclaves equals very, very bad. Next, let's talk about chemical waste. Some of the chemicals we use in the lab are harmless and considered non-hazardous, like sodium chloride solutions or TAE buffer. These can be washed down the sink, and non-sharp solids that have come into contact with them can be put in the regular trash. But many other chemicals are considered hazardous because they're either flammable, corrosive, toxic, an oxidizer, or some combination of these hazards, and they all need to be disposed of according to EHS rules. You should follow your institution's protocols, but here are some general guidelines. First, it doesn't make sense to call EHS to pick up your chemicals every single time you do an experiment because often you're working with really small volumes. You can't be like, hey EHS, I've got one milliliter of formaldehyde for you, can you come and get it? Instead, labs maintain collection bins for hazardous chemical waste, so you can add to them over time and just call EHS when they're getting full. These waste bins have to be stored in specially designated areas of your lab called chemical waste satellite accumulation areas. They're typically located in the fume hood so that fumes from the waste can't leak into the lab. The collection bins have to be stored in secondary containers, like those plastic tubs, and they have to be labeled according to EHS rules. Let's take a look at a label for a common tissue fixative, FAA. First, notice the label doesn't just say FAA. You need to spell out the full name of the ingredients it consists of. In this case, formaldehyde, ethanol, and glacial acetic acid, as well as their respective percentages, what types of hazards they confer, where the container is being stored, and the contact information for your lab. Notice we don't fill out the date right away. 
We only do that when the container is full and we've scheduled a pickup because it's actually illegal for waste containers to hang out for more than three days after dating the tag. Liquid and solid waste for a given chemical can often be combined in the same container, but check with your EHS office first as protocols can vary. Combining different chemicals into one container is generally not recommended though. You know, of course, FAA already consists of several different chemicals and it's not possible to separate them, but we wouldn't want to combine our FAA waste with waste from an entirely different experiment without consulting EHS first. Make sure to always close the lids of the waste containers after you've used them. And call EHS to pick up containers that are three quarters full. We have a couple more waste types to discuss to make sure our disposal skills are thoroughly sharpened. First, just a quick note that sometimes you'll use sharps for things that don't involve biological or chemical hazardous waste. And we have a special bin for that. It isn't red. It's so important to not put your sharps in the regular trash. They always need to go into a special container to prevent injury to your building's custodial staff, your lab mates, and yourself. Second, as a biologist, I go through a ton of microscope slides and serological pipettes for my research, which eventually need to get discarded. And every scientist I know, including me, has broken at least one piece of glassware during their time in the lab. Enter the glassware box. It has a very handy cardboard construction suitable for all your glass disposal needs that won't get punctured by any stray shards. Glass that goes in here needs to be clean. It eventually winds up in the regular trash or recycling, so it can't be contaminated with any hazardous waste. Well, that's all for now. Waste is a fact of lab life, but luckily there are tons of super knowledgeable health and safety officers to tell us what to do with all of it. The types of waste we've covered today might be the only ones you ever encounter in your scientific career, or you may eventually work in a lab that works with radioactivity or nanoparticles or super infectious pathogens, in which case, even more exciting waste disposal techniques await you.